your soul and spirit fly into mystic let your soul and spirit fly into mystic into mystic into mystic into mystic Welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Tricia Walsh. Good evening, Suzette. You know, I ask you this every year, and I always always say, so what's going on? And every time you answer, there's a lot going on. There's always things going on. So what's going on? This coming <laughs> weekend, we've got um, the Boys and Girls Club Mud Run, which will be at Fields of Fire, which okay. Definitely great family event and raises money for a great cause. And do you know what time that is or they can go on the website? It's um they are doing waves, so okay. I would definitely recommend all the information is on mysticchamber.org on our Great. events calendar. Also the Pirate Fest, mm -hmm. downtown Mystic putting together a pirate festival. And with that's the first, right? It's the it's first, first annual. Oh, that's gonna be and they are having great. pirates come in and do a loot and scavenger hunt and I don't even, every day they add something new to it. So definitely worth uh, coming down and supporting your local downtown businesses and having a great day with your family. Right. And I just got to save the date just a couple of weeks ago for our annual dinner. Now, when is that? That is December 5th at the Mystic okay. Marriott. We're going with a old Hollywood oh, theme. I saw year. that. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we will be soliciting people to buy a star on our Chamber Walk of Fame. Okay. Um, You'll be getting your invitations for that shortly. The Chamber Walk of Fame. Okay, and, and is there a dress code for that evening? Or is Fabulous. It <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> More information uh, coming your way in, in the next couple of Mystic mat Matters, but Fabulous, I, I think, is a great way to describe mm -hmm. uh, the wardrobe for that evening. So there's probably that Marilyn Monroe sort of Absolutely. Look. Okay. We'll be going blonde. Okay. And, and, and stay tuned for that as well, because I'd just love to see that. But well, some new and exciting things coming. Uh, definitely. Always that's great. things constantly coming up, so definitely just keep your eye on our events calendar, and we always are posting not just our own events, but what's happening in the community. So, you know, Tricia, this evening, it's, it, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful guest this evening, but she is not new to Mystic Matters, and I don't know how many times she's been on Mystic Matters, but she, every time she comes on, always something new and exciting uh, that she has to report and al always wakes us up too uh, to some of the the events and uh, uh, she's just a, a person with so much information and, and I'd like to reintroduce uh, Kathleen O'Byrne from the Community Coalition for Children. Welcome back, Kathleen. Thank you, Suzette. <laughs> well, I didn't know how to introduce her. I had to make it exciting again because she's always, always. Uh, well, this just is my a first time person. on the yes. show with Kathleen. Yeah. So, this so is we have time. a lot to. Always something new. And, uh, yeah. yes. So, Kathleen, what are you talking about this evening? Well, I'm talking about Community Coalition for Children. Okay. We're coming up on our annual two-program event. Uh, it's usually the third Wednesday in October, so it's the 21st at the Guard. And the program is actually at 7 o'clock uh, with Dr. David Katz from Yale. We'll have to hear more about yeah, him. We're going to hear yeah. more about him. Yeah. But we're hoping folks will come early because we have a free reception and health fair. And so we're having a number of folks who are in the business of, of health in one way or another. Um, to be in the lobby and be willing to give out information and we're also having some wonderful food served up by um, perhaps fiddleheads of New London okay. as well as the culinary students in New London High School and uh, wow, Norwich Free Academy. Wow! Yeah, the kids love doing it. They get to pass the food and this is a chance to really think about what is healthy food for early evening before an event when you don't want people to fall asleep. Right. Uh, want to right. get enough food in so and it's healthy. Actually, so no mac and cheese? No, no mac and cheese okay. that evening, no. Okay, so that doesn't <laughs> like sit right vegetables, here. Vegetables, <laughs> that kind of thing. That sounds... Yes, yes. Yeah. probably very creative yeah. because they usually do a beautiful job. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So now, maybe, especially because it's my first time with you on the show, 
Could you explain a little bit more about what is Community Coalition for what Children? What is Community Coalition? Community Coalition has actually been around since 1996. And Tricia, the interesting thing is it was formed around a kitchen table in Norwich. A bunch of moms were saying, oh, you know, don't you wish you had Adele Faber living next door? And she was the how, how to talk so your kids will listen and how to listen so your kids will talk lady. And uh, the more they got thinking about that and giggling about it, they thought, you know, we could do that. And so they hired her to come and talk in 1996, wow. which is, you know, it's hard to believe we've been at this for all, all the years since. And each year we bring in somebody who is um, noteworthy um, and talking about ways that families and educators can really make a difference with our kids and students. Um, interestingly enough, over those years, we have returned to the topic of bullying nine different times yes. in one way or another. And gee, you just picked up the paper again and seen oh, that another there suicide another because, yeah. young yeah. young woman, um, teenager, mm -hmm. um, bullied by the girls in mm -hmm. school. And so this continues to go on. But this year we are moving away from bullying and we're looking at uh, childhood nutrition and exercise and a dose of just healthy emotional living. Mm. Dr. Katz um, has a wonderful book. It's called Stealth Health. He's very clever with words. I mean, he's fun to read. Um, and he talks about all the little ways that you can do something with your family or in your classroom or with your Girl Scout troop or your football team, your little league, you know, anywhere where you've got adults and kids kind of mixed together. Yeah. And um, as I had mentioned to you earlier, he has five children of his own, so he has his own little team right. going there. Right. And, and he has reality check there daily, you know, about whether, he has whether no you choice. really can yeah. entice kids to, to eat the kinds of things that he's suggesting. And what I like about it is that the book we're using, which Suzette kind of said, wow, <laughs> this is just a tome. It is, and we're going to have them available at the Guard when we, when I, we have our event for all of $10. It's like a Bible. It is a Bible. Yeah, yeah for healthy living. And what the trick is, is that he asks you to read maybe three little ideas a week. And that as a family, you decide, we'd like to try these three things. And at the end of the week, you all decide, yeah, that was a pretty good one. We'll keep that one. That one, not so much. <laughs> you know? And then you pick three more. But you're keeping the ones cumulatively that you liked and they are just becoming part of the way that you live. And we were laughing about it as part of the Community Coalition for Children saying, so what are the things that you've read that, you know, really intrigued you? And I said, well, I had never known, and, and I've been around for a while, <laughs> I had Not too never long, known <laughs> that I was supposed to brush my tongue when I brushed my teeth. And you see, you knew that. I did. Trisha, yeah. did yeah. you know that? Yeah. They did. Well, now they make the fancy toothbrushes with the special tongue yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, you yeah. see, even though I have an electric toothbrush, <laughs> somehow I had missed that but instruction. But I, I want to tell you, some, some people do not know that. I, I, will, I will tell you. Well, my dental hygienist was horrified that I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I confessed. And she said, and not only your tongue, Kathleen, but you're supposed to be so you're doing the roof right, of your, roof mouth, of your as mouth as well. Right. And evidently, the optimum time for this to happen mm -hmm. is in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, one might have thought maybe at night, but he says no in the morning because that's the time when all this stuff is collected overnight. Right. And evidently our mouth is one of the filthiest places mm -hmm. in our body. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to do that. And he says to try to do it for up to a minute. Right. I must say I find my patience kind of <laughs> lagging in probably about 30 seconds, so I'm working on that. But I have to tell you, I find myself <laughs> trying to talk to my husband Chuck at the same time. Oh. And he's like, what? Why do you, you know, because 
<laughs> Double I mean, Yeah, well, and I also don't have the patience, so I try to get things done all at once. But anyways. <laughs> but, but that's the sort of thing that at the end of the week you would kind of hope the family would say, you know, that's a really good habit, and we should do that. Uh, and along that same dental line, I can remember reading a couple of years ago that if I flossed every day, and I had never flossed every day, maybe every other day if I was really right. lucky, that I would add two years to my lifetime. Now, uh, I didn't know that. And I thought, wow. you know, at my age, anything you could do to <laughs> <laughs> two, two years so to your lifestyle. Over <laughs> is starting to fall pretty regularly. Uh, yeah, wow, I'm really there every day. Oh, that's great. So my, it's, it's my just, dentist would love that. <laughs> yeah, your dentist will love that. And, and another one that um, we've really had an awfully good time with, um, actually, Dr. Katz does address it, but not quite in the way that I'm going to share with you. When I was a little kid, maybe about five years old, all of a sudden, I had spots all over my, my gums and my tongue. Mm -hmm. And my mother was just frantic. She was a home economist, you know, one who had been trained to oh, yeah. do all the right things yeah. in the household. And here's her eldest daughter with spots, spots. all over and, uh, and yeah. on my teeth. And of course, we made a beeline for the dentist. And he said, oh, Mrs. Parker, not to worry. All you need to do is feed her some apricots. So, of course, I'm sure she went home, and we probably did canned apricots, because this would have been World War II right, or right. soon thereafter, and so that's probably what happened. Ago. But Dr. Katz says dried apricots daily as a snack, and maybe just even one, because there's potassium in it. Mm -hmm. And when you dry a fruit, it condenses the benefits even further so that you're getting more. And of course, they're easy to keep because they come in a little pouch. And they stay forever. And they stay forever. Yeah. So when my black lab started getting black gums, I started cutting up apricots once a day, keep an apricot time. into five little pieces so you won't choke on it. And he has the brightest, pinkest gums you'd ever like to you're see. You're kidding. Wow. Oh. It's, you know what? It's We're magic. doing right after the show. <laughs> Because of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Very just it's just little things like that yeah. that you know that would make a difference in your health. Like a, just the yeah. adding on the two years, Tricia, to your life by flossing is by just flossing. Really, yeah. Wow. Another thing that he's really big about, um, he says that if you can get fresh vegetables, that's optimum. And I have a little piece here that came out actually in a gardener's catalog saying that one out of six Americans needs food assistance, and yet there is little fresh produce at food pantries. And we know that in yeah, the local area yeah. here, um, Pocketuck Neighborhood mm -hmm. Center yes. and Groton Social Services, and also over in New London, and Gemma Moran, mm -hmm. that they are working very hard on having people pledge a certain amount of produce from their gardens. And it's kind of hard to guess how much you're going to actually be able to right. give. But I found that at least once a week, I take an egg carton and put all of mixed little cherry tomatoes in there and take them into the food pantry. And yes, that's only a dozen, but they are so cute and they travel so well. And the folks always say, oh, those are out of here in a flash because they're easy to take yeah. home. And that way you're recycling your egg carton, so you're being a good camper. And the other thing that it says is that the portion of food produced in the United States that's thrown away wow. uneaten each year is one-third. Mm -hmm. That we are a truly wasteful, mm -hmm. wasteful nation. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you would try to eat fresh if you could understanding that that's not always possible. He says number two, and in fact, sometimes number one, are the frozen, frozen vegetables, because they are frozen when they are right. optimum right. condition. And they're easy to keep and use. You pour out only as many as you really want. So there are lots of advantages to that. But if you are eating canned vegetables, and many of us do, um, 
he says, and fruits, make sure that you rinse, put, put it in a sieve, and rinse it with cold water because it's the liquid in the can that's going to tend to have the bad elements in it. It's going to have too much sugar. It's going to too have salt. It's going to have yeah. Ad, ad, yeah. and salt yeah. and preservatives of all kinds. Oh. So that if you rinse, rinse those ingredients first, and then if you're going to go on and cook the vegetables or warm them up, just do that in tap water. And he says, for example, that he would recommend that people eat some form of bean daily. Mm. And now there are many ethnic groups for whom mm -hmm. oh, yes. that is a very yeah. attractive option. Right. Uh, and some of us could learn to do that. I love black beans. Yes, I do too. You know, yeah. Mexican food yeah. could be my middle name yeah. if you allowed it. Yeah. Um, but he says, just think about it. You could put a few black beans in your eggs in the morning mm -hmm. and have a little salsa on that and you've got huevos rancheros right at home. What about at the sour cream? Can you add that on too? Well, you <laughs> could. <laughs> you could. I just heard you explaining something to myself. Well, can we, can we just add a little bit there here and there? And it'd be really, really Dairy. Good. There you go. You're yeah. adding dairy. Yeah. You know, I noticed, skim, Kathleen. Yeah, skim. I noticed you are quoting quite a bit from his books, from his book. Yes. And they are all things that seem, that seem just to make sense but we really don't do. And they're very simple. Mm -hmm. These are That's simple the recommendations. You know, we don't all have to be gourmet cooks or, you know, they're just very simple and it just will, you know, add to that healthy living that you're, you're, you're talking about. Well, and you know, Suzette, in his book called The Way to Eat, mm -hmm. which really is more for adults, but he talks about, and, and I, can't tell you how thrilled I was to hear him saying this, that often a good solution for very young infants, once they're beyond that original breastfeeding stage, would be to go to skim milk. Yes, ma'am. That, that, this might be something yes. you need to share with your sister. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I just the really truth the is twins. that if an infant Built all those fat cells young. Yeah, it's very difficult through a lifetime to get it off. To get it off, because it becomes built in very young. And we were actually in Hawaii when our number two was born, Heather, um, little chunky as she arrived. And I've got to admit to you that after about six weeks of trying to heat up formula, because that's what we had to do mm -hmm, in those days, mm -hmm. in the heat of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought, you know what? The milk that comes straight from the supermarket is sterile and, I'm, and cool and how much more interesting. So when I went back for the checkup with the doctor, I said, I have to confess that this is what I've been doing. And he said, good for you. Wow. Because, you know, everybody is so careful falling over themselves yeah, saying, yeah. oh, you have to yeah. do this and this and this and this for this period of time. When in actuality, with guidance right. from right. your visiting nurse or your pediatrician right. or whoever, it might be a lot wiser to be using foods that are not building in. But don't you, if there's cells for a lifetime, you, know, you have the fat content, but then you have the bone content. The calcium. The calcium you need, side well, of it. You've so got it's, the so calcium. It's a, so it is a balance. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Well, I, I, I tell you, so this <coughs> is coming up October 21st at 7 o'clock. But the at focus the guard, at yeah. the Guard is healthy kids and healthy community. So mm -hmm. it's, it starts with the parents, right? It starts with the family. Absolutely. Teaching the kids. And then these kids grow up to be healthy adults. One hopes. Well, yes. And, I, and right. I think that's his focus that evening, that correct? You, absolutely. That you're building in habits for a lifetime. Now, the fun thing is that on Tuesday morning, he will work with hundreds of local middle school and high school students who come in from the regional middle schools and high schools. Uh, and any adults who um, are available from 9.30 to 12.30 on Tuesday morning, the 22nd, are 
indeed welcome to come. And, you know, if people, for example, who could get away from a child care uh, setting for a couple of hours and hear him talk, either Monday night and or Tuesday morning, or folks who are in the field of nutrition for school systems. I mean, this would be ideal. He's going to work with the students on a program that we're calling Food Forensics because we want to empower the teenagers to know exactly what it is that they're eating and influence the choices in their families now and, of course, their families for the future. And basically saying that if you understand what you're reading on the content list, that then you're in control. You're making the choice of what you're eating. It's not just something that's coming at you. Uh, without a choice. And so they, in turn, can be real sources of uh, education for their own families because many families have not come from extended families that have necessarily known what good nutrition could be right. or who are really trying to stretch their budget. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately... Well, it's easy to go out and get a pizza. Yeah. Yes, and you know, you know and he would say to you that, that that's actually okay if you're going to do a thin crust mm -hmm. and you're going to have lots of veggies on it. But maybe hold back on the number of added cheeses or the added meats that are on top. That a supreme or whatever the name might be for it. Darn! <laughs> uh, is, is, is really yeah. a wonderful answer. Yeah. You know, I have a question, though. Is it too late for us adults? No. Okay. Because, you know, you see so many people, you know, start, I mean, let, let's, this is kind of getting off track a little bit, but starting on, on certain diets and then healthy living and then going back. So it's never too late. We, can, we haven't ruined our system. We haven't ruined, you know, we can go back. Because I happen to like pizza. Okay, just so everybody knows. But uh, what I'm saying is in moderation, too. So Absolutely. adults can be taught this as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I was playing around with diet is a four-letter word. Mm -hmm. Diet really means the food that you eat every day. But we get it all confused with dieting, mm -hmm. which is the negative piece. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I kind of like the word menu better. That's another four-letter word. But menu somehow has the sense of it sounds good. choice. Mm -hmm. Well, the menu on your computer, mm -hmm. the menu in a restaurant. You get to choose what you're eating. And I don't think he believes that in any given family that every, every kid gets to choose every, <laughs> every meal, you know. Right. That there is going to be a standard menu for the evening, so to speak. But that there is input from all the members of the family. and learn to taste things that are new but not turn it into a fight about having to eat all of your green beans before you get to have whatever. Just keep introducing some new things that are healthy things and modeling it. And he would say, don't beat yourself up. If you, you know, you go to a smorgasbord or a buffet, which he says are just killers. Right. Um, because I'm the not real sure more <laughs> choice you yeah. have, well, and also the more the likely you are. Of something, well, you know, or even that, if you know. think about our events that we tend right. to networking events where they constantly have a platter of this or that in your right. face, and you're going, yeah, you know, bite of this, bite of that. By the end of the evening, you you have to think in your your head, uh, uh, how many of those did I have? Uh, you know, what is it going to do for me tomorrow? But I guess mm -hmm. you get you start all over again, you know, with well, a healthy. And my mom, the, the home economist, had a good solution for that because she and my dad were with NATO in Europe and there would often be three cocktail parties in an evening. Wow. At, yeah. At, wow. At, and she was having to speak in a language that wasn't her own, so it was desirable not to drink too much. And, I think our lives and, <laughs> and, yeah, it does sound like your lives. Well, it does. You and said three cocktail parties in the evening. I'm thinking, Trisha and I probably, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. We but probably her have trick to go. was to drink a full glass of milk before she went. Oh. Uh, so that you've coated your stomach with um, a good uh, nutrient before you go. And then she would literally count the number of things that she was consuming. She had a, a max so that if somebody has now nibbled five of those wonderful trays, 
that then the little bell goes off and says, well, I can have one more, so I might be more selective. And she's the same woman who used to count out the number of peanuts we could have before dinner. Ten. I wish I could have to been be this, precise. this woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she was a woman before her time. Yeah. You know, you know if you yes, think about she was. it. Yes, she was. And it, all of you were ha turned out healthy. Well, and she yeah. was always slender because she was building in habits. And so now when you read that it would be good to snack, and Dr. Katz does talk about snacking. He said it's really the kiss of death to keep holding off till whatever meal it is because then you tend to overeat and that you'd probably be better off, like kids coming home after school, mm -hmm. if there were an apricot then and a fig newton or an apple cut up or, an apple yeah, cut yeah, up yeah. or something yeah. crunchy like a carrot, maybe get to scrape the whole long carrot and then have fun with it. Yeah. Um, Does he also talk about portion? Yes. Okay. And part of that is just using smaller plates. Mick and I use um, a small sort of a, a salad plate. For, for both a dinner plate. Well, for breakfast and lunch. Okay. And then at dinner, our dinner plates are actually smaller than the usual dinner plates. Mm -hmm. And you just have a sense that whatever we're eating has really filled up that plate. Wow. And we don't go back. And one trick I learned is if you go out to eat, ask for a to-go to container when you place your order and then cut it in half and put it, the half in there. So it's not Great even... Great idea. I mean, because even a half of a meal at a restaurant sometimes way too much. So if you already take it off your plate, you're not even thinking about That's it. That's a great idea. Wow. Although usually my husband just eats it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Does he also talk about um, what meal is most important? Like is the breakfast, uh, and I'm asking this question because I'm, I'm not a dinner time person because that just seems, if you eat a, a halfway decent dinner, I just, I can't go to bed. But I'd rather mm. have a bigger, uh, Breakfast or lunch actually is my biggest. That's when I go out with you, Trisha, and you don't have the same type of lunch that I want you to have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's my enjoyable you don't get time. To sleep after lunch. <laughs> yeah, so, but does he talk about which meal is most well, important? And or is that? Of course, it's also a lifestyle issue. If you if you have the luxury of going out for lunch, that's <laughs> that's a, no. All Live kidding aside, there are a lot of people. <laughs> Who, who don't have, yeah, that. have that, and so they're right. better off taking, and he would say, eat only what you have brought from home. Okay. That that way you are, you are packing fruits, you are packing vegetables, you are packing a granola bar, you are packing something that you know is healthy, and then the smell of popcorn being popped in the office microwave is not going to just drive you right. crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and again, he would say snack. I can tell you at 4 o'clock in the Pentagon, you used to smell Russian tea, which has that wonderful mm -hmm. sort of cinnamon yes. smell. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, that was a, you could smell it just permeating everywhere. And then you could also smell the popcorn, and that was not good. Yeah. That was tough. But he would say that if, for example, you are among the generation that is maybe retired at mm -hmm. this point, that eating a larger meal at noontime and a smaller meal in the evening We'll would be, be ideal. Um, breakfast, most people believe that it's really important to have something, and that's why so many of the school programs now include breakfast. Right. And, and uh, that's probably partially true because maybe there hasn't been a breakfast dinner yeah. Oh, yeah, the night, the night before. before. Yeah. So yeah. there might have been a very long period of time since there was food at school uh, the day before. Um, and we were talking earlier about the fact that many of the local school systems, if they have a percentage of students with free and reduced lunch, then the federal government right. has passed legislation to offer that to all the students in the school, and it's actually cost-saving because then they're not ha handling money and having to spend money right. handling money. Right. They're just spending the money on the food. And everybody gets the same. Everybody gets the same. There's no stigma attached. Right. Well, Kathleen is... is <laughs> we could go on and we on, could go on. <laughs> Every time she comes, see, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm just getting gross with what she's, she has to say. And, and, and Tricia, and I know you're enjoying it as well. But uh, we have to wrap it up. It's the Community Coalition for Children, 
Feet and Forks, Healthy Kids, Healthy Community by uh, Dr. David L. Katz, and that's Monday evening, October 21st at uh, 7 p.m. So, uh, but preview to, before that, we have a 6 p.m. health fair and reception. So at the Guard Center, uh, for more information, just give us your uh, website. Or, it's you know. www.communitycoalitionforchildren.org. Kathleen O'Byrne, thank you so much for being on the show, and I know you're going to be back with us next year or whatever endeavor you have coming up. Uh, we are <laughs> Mystic you. Matters, the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Good evening. So soul and spirit fly into mystic. Let your soul and spirit fly into mystic.